How can you be so damn dumb? It's like, it's certainly possible that you married, barbar married barbarian witches. Fine, but you don't have, you, you're so lacking in sense that you would discuss that in public, not noticing that you picked them. You know, and I've often thought that I've been fortunate in my marriage because you think, well, you, got, you get married and you live happily ever after. It's like, That's not it, is it? You don't want that even. You don't want, what do you want? You want your partner to do just, all she's going to do is sprinkle rose petals in front of you, right? And pat you on the back of the head and tell you how wonderful you are constantly, day after day. Man, you'd be so sick of that after two, well, maybe it'd take a month. But, <laughs> but let's say two weeks. It'd be, you'd be, because you know she should be more on the side of who you could be than on the side of who you are. And if she's deluded enough or terrified enough to worship you in your current form, then, well, that doesn't say much for her. And it certainly isn't very helpful for you. You want someone that's going to get in the way now and then, you know, and, and to contend with. And I've been fortunate in my marriage because I have someone to contend with. You know, we, we have our, our discussions and they're not easy. Well, but partly because we have hard problems to solve, because life is full of hard problems. I want someone who will stand up, you know, and, and have her say, even if it's not what I would say. And maybe I'm even willing at times, because she's quite intuitive and a good dreamer, and I'm more facile verbally. And so we have to be careful in our relationship, because if I'm in a particularly ornery mood, and she has something to say, I can usually slice up her arguments verbally. You know, and, and that's, that's fine as far as I'm concerned, because I get to win. But it's stupid. Well, it's stupid. It's first of all, that doesn't mean I'm right. It just means I can formulate verbal arguments slightly faster than she can. But her intuitions and her dreams are often extraordinarily accurate. And so we've learned to, to some degree, to buttress each other's arguments just on the off, off chance that the person that you were foolish enough to marry, marry, might know something you don't now and then about something important, you know? And then with regards to your partner, here's something to think about with regards to role. So my wife and I have had this discussion many times, and one of the discussions is, well, how are we to treat each other in public? And it isn't, her name is Tammy, the discussion isn't, how should Jordan treat Tammy in public, or how should Tammy treat Jordan? That's not the discussion. This isn't personal. It's how should a wife treat her husband, and how should a husband treat his wife. It's impersonal. And it's partly, you don't put your partner down in public. Why? Well, it's not because you're hurting that person's feelings. That's not why. It's that you're denigrating the relationship that you are in voluntarily. You know, and I've, some of the most painful days I've ever spent, one in particular I spent with a group of men who had been in therapy for their marriage, and who bloody well needed it, I can tell you that. And they spent their whole day complaining about their wives. Like, it just made me sweat the whole day. I thought, I can't believe I'm here with you guys. I, I, I can't tell you why I was. It's just, you know, it was just happenstance more than anything. And I thought, how can you be so damn dumb? It's like, it's certainly possible that you married, barbar married barbarian witches. Fine. But you don't have, you, you're so lacking in sense that you would discuss that in public. Not noticing that you picked them. So basically all you're doing is holding up a sign and waving it constantly that says, I'm an idiot, I'm an idiot, right? And so, well, back to responsibility. You have a responsibility to those whom you love and are obligated to, to ensure that they manifest themselves in a manner that's most beneficial to them over the long run. Now, you have the same responsibility, I would say, to yourself. But you'll have blind spots. Other people have to help you with that. But so the rule is, you know, you don't let, you don't, you help your wife figure out how not to make a fool of herself in public. And she extends to you the same courtesy. Like society is made up of threats like that to some degree. It's an ineradicable, ineradicable part of society. That would be the tyrannical aspect of the Greek king, let's say. You know, we, we've organized a set of punishments and threats that keep each of us in alignment. However, generally speaking, in a society that's functional, we've decided to adopt 
agreement with that set of principles more or less voluntarily. You know, we say, well, you have rights and responsibilities, and I have rights and responsibilities, and I'm willing to pay a price for yours, including the acceptance of punishment if I transgress, but you're going to do the same for me. What should you do when you make a mistake? Now, one answer is catastrophic dissolution. That's, that's a collapse into chaos. Well, that's... No one is going to pick that voluntarily. <clears throat> Let's put it that way. It's unbelievably unpleasant. Terribly anxiety-provoking. Shameful. Uh, and painful, all at the same time. Worse, it can mean the absence of positive emotion. Because if you really collapse into chaos, not only are you overwhelmed by negative emotion, but the positive emotion system shut off, and that, that's what happens to someone who's extraordinarily depressed and also hyper-anxious at the same time. Not only are they suffering from an excess of negative emotion, but they've got no incentive movement forward whatsoever. Okay, so that's not an optimal solution, because it takes you out. The other possible, and so I would call that a nihilistic solution or a chaotic solution. It, it's not a solution, it's a dissolution. And you can think about it as a precursor to a potential solution, but it's very easy to get stuck there. And that's why Jonah could have stayed in the belly of the whale, along with all the other people that were eaten by the whale, and never got back out. And you see people like that all the time. Their error has come along, blown out their frames of reference, they've collapsed into the underworld, into the chaotic underworld, and they don't know how to get out. They have post-traumatic stress disorder, or they're depressed, or they're hyper-anxious, or, or they're, they're resentful and aggressive and, and destructive. Like, there's any number of states of being that can overwhelm you when the bottom has fallen out of your life.